go live team, let's get this started. Oh, thanks for that, Neto. Um, just confirm that everybody can hear me and see my screen. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get cracking. Um, so another London Excel meetup. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, slightly different time to the usual for kind of regulars uh, at our meetup. Uh, but I think for some of you, this works a bit better. So you might be happy about that. <laughs> Uh, but we've got Raheem here. Um, as usual, I'll leave uh, Raheem to introduce himself um, and I'll just go on with the usual uh, kind of introduction and let you know about uh, what's coming up, really. Um, but Raheem is going to create a, a dashboard in an hour, essentially. Uh, upcoming events. Um, so some of you would have seen this on the message from the previous event. Uh, but next up, uh, going into March uh, on the 9th, uh, Rene Martin's coming. Uh, we're going to be doing some number formatting. A uh, bunch of maybe stuff that you know, but then also a bunch of uh, kind of tricks and kind of hidden secrets there that maybe you don't know. And then 8th of April, um, in negotiations still, <laughs> news coming soon, hopefully. Uh, maybe by the time you get the post meetup message. Um, but it's pretty much locked in for that day if you want to book it off. It's probably going to be a Power Query or a DAX session, that kind of stuff. It's probably all it's going to be. Uh, but still negotiating that. And then moving on to the 19th of May, we've got Anne Walsh coming, who a lot of you probably know. She's attended some of these. Um, and, yeah, she'll be doing some formula stuff. So nice mixture. We've got dashboards today. You know I like to mix it up. Where we're gonna have little formulas, then we've got some formatting, some tricks, then we've got some maybe Power Query or DAX stuff, and then we're back to classic Excel formulas. Um, Anne's gonna be doing the likes of count ifs, sum ifs, uh, which have been around for a while, but nobody knows how ridiculously useful those functions are, um, especially count ifs, arguably, that little bit more uh, can do a lot, a lot of things. Uh, they'll be at the usual time of six o'clock. Uh, GMT. Uh, moving on to just a few more things I normally like to say. So we are live on YouTube at the moment. Just bear that in mind if, uh, if you're interested or if it bothers you. And it's being recorded there as well. So I know Taya put a link in the chat just a few moments ago. There's also a link to that YouTube kind of replay, or if you want to watch it live there rather than Zoom, it's up to you now. Uh, but a link on that is in the meetup description. It will also be in a follow up email. <laughs> so it is provided. So you can always watch this uh, meetup back if you maybe miss something that Raheem says or you want to follow along. Uh, Raheem is going to provide the file afterwards. So I know you don't have it now, but you have it after if you want to follow along with the recording. Uh, yes, and if you do want that follow-up email, uh, please make sure you have RSVP'd in the meetup. Uh, so obviously you can come on to the link here without RSVP in. But if you want that follow-up email, uh, just make sure you go to, you know, the London Excel meetup on meetup.com and RSVP there because the email gets sent to those who've RSVP'd. So you won't get it if you're not there. And that will have Raheem's file and the YouTube link, etc. cetera. Uh, that is everything I normally say. So if I stop my share and Raheem, if you'd like to introduce yourself and do your magic. All right, so thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning from the different time zones. Thank you so much for joining in today. Uh, my topic for today's webinar is how to create a sales analytics dashboard uh, with priority of less formulas or no formulas. And uh, this would be a very interesting journey of one hour to explore the Excel uh, built-in features and to learn that uh, how to get some analytics out of pivot tables and slicers and combining all other things. 
So let me just uh, make a full screen for my presentation. And uh, all right. So uh, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Alan, for this opportunity to speak on your platform. And uh, after the meetup, if anyone would like to connect with me, so they are welcome to add me on LinkedIn or Facebook as you like. So my name is Raheem Zulfikarili. I am Microsoft Certified Trainer from 2016 till date. It has been a five years of journey till now. I am Microsoft Office Specialist Expert and Master for uh, Office versions of 2013, 16, and 19. I have completed all other certifications as well, just like Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, uh, so this this was an event uh, held in Pakistan uh, before COVID. Uh, we we initiated uh, to make sure that all the industry people can come together and uh, learn more about Excel and and discuss their case studies. So we launched Pakistan Excel Conference in Pakistan, Karachi, and this was our first initiative to bring the people together and share the ideas. Uh, for the last nine years, I have been training people in Excel uh, for, for the various corporate sectors and, and institutions, academic and both professional. Uh, this, this picture is related to the uh, my session at Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan, ICAP. Uh, we also do some uh, corporate social responsibility CSR initiatives, and uh, uh, we have done a lot of uh, voluntarily work with respect to women's development with respect to academic side and also the differently able people who who are unable to hear and speak so we provided them fantastic results so if any one of you uh, wants to learn more you are welcome to join our youtube channel that is excel basement and uh, you can subscribe to this channel we are also available on Facebook page as well, and we do update a lot of tips and tricks and videos, and also the updates from the Microsoft on a weekly basis. We are also on the Instagram, so if you are on Instagram, uh, do add us, and uh, you can learn some quick tips and tricks uh, regarding Excel, Power Platform, Power BI. We have developed a blog. If, if you are fond of reading articles and, and some tips and tricks, so you can anytime visit to the excelbspin.org slash blog. So let's start and let's learn the first rule for creating a dashboard is the first model view controller, MVC rule. Now the MVC rules define as that a user should put the data in a separate sheet, the transformation on a formula as a separate sheet and the final layout for the dashboard in a separate sheet. So a user should not be doing that. He is putting the database appending every week or every month. And, and just by next to that, he is starting applying formulas like VLOOKUPs or index match or any other functions. And to, to just grab the uh, analytics out of the dat data and start creating the visuals on the same sheet. So it's not recommended that, that a user uh, creates all of things together in one sheet. You have to put or a break into three sheets. So that's the MVC. So in today's class, when we will be demonstrating about the dashboard, about the sales analytics dashboard, you will learn that uh, we will not put the dashboard visualizations into a data sheet. It, it should be a separate, separate one. All right, the next rule about the dashboards is learning about a crap rule. So any one of you heard about crap rule I would like to have your uh, feedback in the chat window. So have you gone through this rule for creating dashboards in Excel? Uh, you can write yes or no in the chat window. OK, so we have feedback coming in. So a lot of people have not heard about the crap rule, uh, but it's very important to learn a crap rule in uh, creating dashboards in Microsoft Excel or Power BI or Tableau or any other BI application. So what is CRAP rule is all, all about? It's an acronym. So C stands for contrast, R for the repetition, A for alignment, and P for proximity. So let's discuss each of them one by one. So when we create dashboards, 
our main first focus is is to make a diversion regarding that particular visual of our audience so now for example uh, if there are four boxes and uh, imagine that it contains some numbers, either financial numbers or a non-financial numbers. So when I put these four boxes and I put some numbers in, in it and I present through an Excel application, so the, the audience would have not a specific choice to see which box first. They, they, they can go and they can choose any random box to view first according to their choice. But crap rules basically uh, is a complete rule for the dashboard so that you, you should place your information accordingly from top to bottom, from left to right, and, and how you want to uh, tell the data storytelling through your dashboards. That's very important. So doing something different because our human eyes and brains focus uh, something which is very different. So so we, we, we are bo born like uh, we, we focus on different things first ra rather than with the same patterns. So if there are four boxes, so what would be some of the key tips to make it a different way and, and making it more focused? So the first way is to change the color of that particular box. So this way uh, you, you basically focus that particular attention to that particular visual on your dashboard. So in contrast, the first technique is to change the color. The second technique is to create a border or do some fancy font font uh, with, with that particular box. The third approach is to change the shape. The, this definitely makes something different and you will focus uh, a different thing first in the dashboard. The fourth one is to change the size of this particular box. So definitely when it becomes a different, it, it will grab your attention, right? Then the orientation from top to bottom. And the last one is the distance. So you can see that the three boxes are of in, in the particular distance, same distance, but whereas the other fourth one is, is for a different space or a distance, right? So in contrast, why we have learned that uh, how to change the information, how to change the diversion of that particular visual so it's, it's color, it's thickness, it's shape, it's size, it's position and distance. These are the techniques. Now R stands for the repetition. So now you can see a dashboard here, which relates to the training feedback analytics. And you can see uh, some numbers, some KPIs and some gauge charts, pie charts, bar charts, and uh, some slicers as well. So this particular dashboard has a repetition of colors, fonts, ideas, so, so the repetition rule says that you need to apply your organization theme colors, not the color of your choice, definitely. So if I am working in a bank, so I have particular theme colors which need to be placed on my dashboard. So it, it could be RGB, or if I'm using some other software, it could be a hex color codes, which give, give given by the marketing department. So a repetition of ideas, a repetition of fonts, uh, we, we don't use fancy, more fancy fonts in the dashboard, some, some standard fonts in the dashboard. So it, it should look like neat and clean. So repetition is all about a repetition of color, visual elements, fonts, and ideas. Then the third alphabet, which was A, that stands for the alignment. So it's very necessary to bring all your uh, different objects or boxes and charts and slicers one together and properly align because if you don't align it properly, it will uh, the, the distance will distract you. So it's very necessary to make sure that whatever you are putting on your uh, spreadsheet should be properly aligned. And you need to have a balancing of all the visuals. And the last is in the crap rule is P stands for the proximity. So proximity says that that items that the items close together are likely to be perceived as a part of same group. Now the proximity is all about make, making a sense of the dashboard. What, what you are putting in your dashboard should have a meaning out of it, uh, which is more relevant to be show and to be forward to your senior managers or the board of directors. Okay, so this is another dashboard, sales performance dashboard. 
which you can see uh, it has a standard layout, some theme colors of that particular organization. Uh, the slicers have been put on top and then there are some uh, column charts and a bar charts and you can see a month wise sales on a line chart. So, so it's graph rule basically gives you an idea that how you put the information uh, starting from the contrast, repetition, alignment and proximity. So proximity is all about a message uh, that you want to give to your audience. Right. So let me just uh, change the window here. All right. So I hope that you are able to see the Excel screen here. And uh, yes. we will be making a dashboard uh, with this data set. So let me explain the data first, and then I will take you towards the dashboard layout. OK, so now you can see that uh, we have three worksheets in this particular workbook, one for the dashboard in which our final designs will be placed in form of charts and slicers. Uh, the one for entirely blank, which is for the formulas and functions we need to drive in, uh, we will be using very less formulas because for this webinar, our priority is to use the built-in features of Microsoft Excel to create a quick dashboard, and that is related to sales. And we have another sheet which contains a data. So uh, MVC rules has been defined here. And MVC says that uh, the data should be in a separate sheet, your calculations in a separate sheet, and then finally a layout for the dashboard. Now, within this data set, let's understand first which kind of columns we have. So we have first column that is related to the order ID, then order dates, customer ID, their respective names, the city they belongs to, state, uh, country, region. There is one country, salesperson, region, ship date, month, quarter. These are time intelligence uh, columns we have created to make sure that we can insert uh, slicers in the dashboard. Uh, payment type, either the payment has been made through credit card, cash, or check. Pro we have some products and uh, their categories and their subcategories. And then we have the unit price, quantity, revenue, and shipping fee. So this is a very good data. Uh, and we can analyze it from very different angles and we can create a lot of different customized charts as per our requirement. Now, what I will do is my first step would be because my approach will be to uh, utilize the built-in features just like a pivot table. So we are starting with a pivot. So I will select my entire data and I will go to the insert tab and I will click on pivot table. And here you go, you, you got your first blank pivot in a separate uh, worksheet, right? And let's give a first name, which is top five customers. So we will be extracting top five customers from a data set with the help of a pivot table. So definitely uh, as, as, as an Excel user, you know, you might have an idea or you have used pivot table before is that whatever the information uh, you required, you place all those fields in the respective uh, sections or, or boxes in order to pivot to be created, right? So I will put some of the fields like uh, I will place the region in filters. Then I will uh, customer names in the rows and the revenue field in the values. And uh, the first visual which we will be creating here, that will be uh, a chart, a, a bar chart, which, which represent the top five customers. So now here, there are so many customers, we need to filter that pivot and we just need to extract top five. So I will open this menu and uh, then I will go to value filters and I will click on top 10. So here we just need top five. So instead of 10, we will give it a number of five and I will press okay, right? So now we got the top five customers here and let me just make it a bit format so that you can see, right? And I will go to more sort options and I will sort it to descending based on sum of revenue. So you can see it from largest to uh, smallest. 
from customer D till customer A, okay? Now we want a visual here. So I will select this uh, pivot table and then I will go to insert tab. And here I will select an appropriate chart that is the bar chart. Now, one thing you can uh, observe when, when you create a bar chart is that the sequence of your uh, information in the pivot will not match with the sequence of your bar chart y-axis. So every time when you create a bar chart, basically the axis is reverse and we need to correct that. So what I will do is I will just right click this vertical axis and from this contextual menu, I will click on format axis. And here I need to apply a check on the option which is available on the right side. You can see here categories in reverse order. So now the flow of information in my pivot starting from customer D is, is now exactly the same in the, in the uh, bar chart as well. But here uh, we need to also make sure that this horizontal axis does not comes on top. So to uh, make it again at the bottom, we need to just click on at maximum category in the horizontal crosses axis, right? Now, from this particular chart, whatever which, which is not required, basically, we, we will just click on that particular element and press the delete key. So I, I don't need a legend here. Uh, I don't need the, these buttons. So I will just right click on it and I will say, hide all field buttons on chart, right? I don't want these grid lines. Uh, title to be renamed, so it's very easy. Just double click on the title and give it a nice name. Let's say top five customers, right? So we also don't want this horizontal axis as well. Uh, to add the data labels, so I will right click on this volume blue bars and I will just click on add data labels, right? So now this visual is ready to show us top five customers and also let's uh, decrease the gap width of these, right? Now what I will do is once the visual is ready, either you can cut this visual by pressing Control X or, or you, you want to have this visual in this sheet as well or in the dashboard. So you need to copy this visual and then paste on the dashboard area, okay? So we have pasted this uh, visual here, top five customers right on on a dashboard layout now when, when we are creating a dashboard it's it's very necessary at the very beginning that we we come up with a design we come up with a sketch that what kind of information we need to put on a on a dashboard it it would be some key performance indicators kpis or the numbers which are coming from the data so we need to put in in a quick summary area or we don't need kpis we need the slicers on top so we we can put the slicer. So you need to design a sketch first uh, rather, th rather than directly going to uh, the execution part. So it's very necessary that a user should be uh, coming up with a neat and clean design and also following the crap rule. All right, so I have just created top five customers sheet. And now what I will do is I will not create another pivot table uh, from the very start. What I will do is I will just copy and make another sheet by pressing control and my left mouse key so that I can get another uh, duplicate sheet. And I, this time I will create a new uh, visual for, for my dashboard and this, this will be related to the sales by representatives. So I will rename this sheet as by sales by representatives. Okay. And now here I want to do some changes. So I need to enable the field list so I will right click on the pivot table and then from this contextual menu, I will click on show field list. And now we need to change uh, some of the fields here. So here, instead of customer name, let's put a uh, salesperson. And instead of, of this uh, bar chart, let's create a column chart. So I will right click on this chart and uh, Let's pick an option that is called change series chart type. And from here, I will say that make it a column chart. So instead of bar chart, we have the column chart and let's rename the title. So this is sales by representatives. 
Now I am going with a theme color which is blue. But as I told you that when you create your dashboards for the organizations, you go with the, your uh, respective theme color. Okay. So I will copy this visual and now I will just paste this visual on my dashboard. Okay. All right. Next. So let's create another sheet. Control and then left uh, mouse key. And now the third visual will be uh, related to the payment types. So we want to check that how the customers are paying to us by cash or credit card or checks. So the third one is payment type. And this time I need to again change some of the fields, right? So instead of salesperson, I will just drag the payment type here. All right, and instead of this column chart, let's select a different chart from here and that will be a donut chart okay so this will be a payment type and you, you can do a lot of things with the charts like you can just uh, add the legend or uh, let's say you want legend at the bottom or you can change the colors of this uh, particular volumes as well or you can add the percentage into the data labels so let's see more options format data labels and let's see we want to add the percentage as well right so once your visual is ready again uh, you can just copy that visual and paste there. One thing you need to remember if you are working with a dark background uh, dashboard. So you need to uh, make sure that your visuals and your font should be in a light color. And uh, sometimes if you are using a background, so you need to uh, make sure that this particular chart background should be in a transparent. So that's very easy. Uh, by default, the background color is in white. So what you can do is you can uh, go to the format tab and uh, open the shape fill and then select the no fill so that it should um, match with the background color on, on your dashboard sheet, right? So, but for, for the moment, for the time being, we are just making it uh, a white theme background. So what I will do now here, I will definitely copy and paste this visual as well uh, right here, okay? All right, so now let's add uh, the slicers. And to add a slicer, you can pick any of the pivot. Now, one thing is that, uh, which, which is technical and you need to understand that, for these three different visuals and different sheets, uh, the memory cache of this pivot is same. And that's how your dashboard, dynamic dashboard will work. So once we are able to create six or seven different kind of visuals and we, we will put them together in, in our dashboard, so on top of that, we will adding a, a slicer, a month slicer and a quarter slicer, and we will link all the existing pivots out of that. So if the memory will be same, so all those pivots will work together. So for example, if, if I select a data and create a new pivot table every time, so the memory cache would, would not be connecting uh, each of the pivot table with together on slicers because the memory would is, is different. So for this particular technique, that's why I am copying and pasting this, this uh, making a copy and paste sheet every time so that the memory should remain same for each of the pivot. And that's how it, it gonna work. So let me uh, add one slicer. So I will go to analyze and then in the analyze tab, you will find insert slicer option. And let's add a slicer for month. And let me increase the number of the columns, which is 12. All right, so you, now you can see a month from December to Jan, Jan to December. And if we don't want a headers or anything, so we can just right click on the slicer, go to slicer settings, and then disable or uncheck the display header from here, right? You can select the color which you want and you can just cut this visual and put on your dashboard. Right, so let me just make 
these objects align properly and uh, in the excel dashboards or any other application which you use for creating dashboards it takes a lot of time in in customization and alignment of the objects so as we learn in the crap rule that alignment of the objects is also very very necessary right now what happens here is uh, let's do a demonstration uh, if i click on any month if i click on any month only the visual which is the bar chart present on the left side of my spreadsheet is changing not the other other charts are changing right so what we going to do is uh, we will make sure that this slicer is connected with the all pivot tables so i will just right click on the slicer and from this contextual menu i will click on report connections and you can see now here from this report connections dialog window uh, we we need to check mark the other pivot tables as well you can see here as soon as i click on any month all these three uh, visuals are changing together right because the memory is is basically same for every pivot and every pivot has a different visual and what we did is we we just make sure that we have we we created a connection so that every pivot is joined together we can also add some more uh, slicers as well for example uh, i will again go to the analyze tab and insert slicer and this time we will bring a slicer for the quarter and let's make it to instead of 1 for so that it should be realign and we don't want title here so i will go to slicer settings and uncheck the display header and then i will cut this visual and i will go to my dashboard and i will paste this right and also we need to take it that we have inserted a new uh, slicer so i will again right click and i will go to report connection and making sure that all the pivots are connected with this slicer as well so now for example if i don't want to select any month i need to directly see quarter 3 so when i click on quarter 3 this is the entirely position of quarter 3 or q1 or q2 right all right so now let's proceed to creating other different visuals that will be more in, uh, interesting so i will just make a copy of this payment sheet again and this time we are proceeding towards the fourth uh, visual that is region wise and here we will instead of payment type we will put the region in rows and instead of uh, this donor chart i will select a column chart here okay and i will just rename this title as region wise sales right we don't need vertical axis just we can just delete it and once our visual is ready you can just copy this visual and paste this on your dashboard area right so slowly and gradually we are not using uh, up till now we have not used any formula anything uh, we are using some built in features and uh, it's it's just changing the way we want our dashboard to be react right then again one more visual let's put um another visual for as a line chart right so i will just right click value field settings and rename this sheet as a uh, month wise sales so instead of region i will put the order date here and uh, i will say grouping of uh, month and years right and also i need to change the visual into a line chart so i will change series chart type as a line chart and i will rename the title that is month y sales okay and then i will put this visual to my dashboard right 
and i will check that all these these two uh, slicers are connected with all the pivots or not so i will go to report connection and now you can see that all the pivots are connected with this particular slicer as well as the quarter one so if i select uh, all the quarters from here so now you can see your line chart month wise sales region wise sales top 5 customers sales by representatives payment type so every different dimension uh, you can create and put it all together all right so let's have one more uh, slicer so i will go to my first pivot or any any pivot table you want to like to go because all uh, memory is basically same memory cache is same for all the pivots so i will add another slicer which is called for the regions and i will just rearrange this slicer and i will just cut this slicer and paste on my dashboard okay so we have put this region slicer here and we will make sure that we have created the report connections so we need to check mark all the pivots so that it should be it should work so now what happens is when i select any of the region so now you can see uh, region wise sales with different angles right for east for south for north right let me select all all of these to select all of these just click on the first uh, dimension and then shift key and then the last one the last name and it will change now here in the quick summary area what we can do is we can just bring the kpis okay we can just bring uh, some key numbers like uh, a region which has the highest sales or a sales person who has done the highest sales or which is the region in which we have done some good sales right so for that we need a separate sheet for a calculation where where we can utilize the index match or or we look up functions together or minimum and maximum uh, for the data so there are less minimum requirement for this kind of interactive dashboard which we which we create right let me show you the final layout uh, which i have already done for you uh, so can i so that i can save some time for you out of of our dashboard now for the quick summary part you can see here we have a and and uh, a number for total revenue uh, the highest revenue of region is north uh, highest representative revenue total number of transactions right right so this is basically in the working sheet where what what we have done so far is with the less formulas like uh, for for getting a total revenue we have used some function then to get uh, the maximum or highest revenue of the region we have used the max function uh, to get the east west north south total uh, numbers we have used the sum ifs function so these are minimum functions minimum requirement uh, in in order to get some some numbers out of the data and to put on the dashboard and what i did is once once i have the numbers uh, i have also used some index and match as well which is very basic so once i have the numbers or the kpis you can say with, with very less formulas so i have put or link them with with a text box so it's it's very easy for example as a demonstration if if i have a number here let's say 100000 and uh, if i want to basically what i will do is i will link this number now this number you can imagine is coming from a formula either sum or count if you are using and you need to put it on your some quick summary area so what you can do is you can go to the insert and then you can just open the shapes and insert this text box so once you once you are inserting a text box what you can do is just click on it go to the formula bar right equals to and go to your calculation sheet and just uh, click on that particular sheet uh, particular cell where your number is so this is in calculation b3 and now you can see that you got the number here so if anything would change here for example 150 so it it will going to change here because it's it's link now once you link that number with a text box you can just do formatting like you can just turn off the uh, fill color of it and you can make it center 
align and increase the size of this particular number, make it some bold, right? So this is how uh, I, I have done in, in this particular dashboard, right? So now you can see that uh, this dashboard is very easy and with, with very less efforts, you can create this kind of dashboard uh, within one hour uh, with, with the help of formatting as well. One more thing which uh, the users want is to put the dashboard when uh, either uh, they want to print that dashboard. So you need to take care of that. Either you print this dashboard in a portrait view or a landscape view. Most of the times the dashboards are very good at landscape view. So I have also done some customization. If I go to file print and then uh, you can just adjust the margins and, and the landscape orientation or a portrait orientation as you like, or you can just simply click on page setup and you can give a percentage which, which you want. All right. So this is how uh, this dashboard is working here. So, so far we have quickly created uh, six different, uh, you can see that six different visuals, but the one more important thing is that I would like to mention is the balancing of the dashboard. So I have put uh, the two column charts and one donor chart and a line chart. And, and I have put, you can see that the height and the width is matching with each of the other visual as well. So this is a balancing part and this dashboard is properly aligned right so the formatting can take up to 15 to 20 minutes uh, of yours to uh, adjust the column widths and raw raw heights as well because uh, as far as when we compare it creating a dashboards in business intelligence applications where, where we have a canvas so we don't have a concept of columns and rows but when we create dashboards in microsoft excel you need to take care of that how you put the numbers and uh, how you will adjust uh, if any visual would add on, so you need to take care of this spreadsheet structure, which is the columns and rows. So, so every time, uh, once you you develop the sketch and once you are confident that your dashboard is, is basically complete with these particular visuals, so now it's very easy to handle it on the spreadsheet structure. Otherwise, if anything comes new in this dashboard, you need to take care of this, uh, inserting some new columns and adjusting column widths and uh, row heights as well. So sometimes it's become a painful for an Excel user as compared to a BI uh, user. Uh, for sharing and collaboration point of view, uh, most of the times, definitely we know that we don't have a, a much uh, user-friendly interface as compared to BI, but in Excel, what you can do is you can uh, do a full screen of this application and present in, in front of the presentation of this dashboard and it's dynamic and interactive. Uh, one more thing which I would like to uh, add here is uh, now uh, with, with uh, going an, another, another point of view or another side of a coin, uh, or a perception, I have also did one webinar, if I can show you, uh, you can subscribe to my channel. This is my channel where I have put a lot of videos regarding Word, PowerPoint, Power BI, Excel, everything is available here. So if I go to my webinars list and uh, let me show you one thing, uh, which, which an Excel user should, should uh, need to understand. So this was my webinar and uh, this this is related to the the death of excel dashboards right <laughs> so now you might think that uh, in in this session we are particularly uh, learning that how we can do sales analytics dashboard in less than 60 minutes so uh, up to a certain data volume and size you you can use microsoft excel but when it comes to the data integration and data is coming from different sources uh, you you might need to have uh, an, another application to switch. But as I have seen in the industry till yet, in the Pakistan industry and, and, and as a globally, a lot of organizations are still using Microsoft Excel for the dashboards. So, uh, but on the other hand, the second school of thought is also so saying that the, the there is a death of Excel dashboards because you can't handle uh, a large volume of amount and a variety of data sets. Whereas if a user know 
about the power query and power pivots and and to mash up all these tools together they still can use excel as a beneficial tool for dashboards but in terms of sharing and collaboration and real time approach uh, the other power bi applications takes an advantage so i do recommend to the audience that do watch this video as well the death of excel dashboards but most interestingly uh, for today's uh, audience in and particularly in this webinar and those who will be watching the recording later on uh, they would might be fascinating that uh this kind of particular dashboard is also very fantastic when it comes to the data analysis part uh, from basic dashboard and i will give the file in presentation after the webinar to alan so that's all from my side and i would like to head towards question and answer session thank you thanks raheem uh so i mean the the chat window has been quite quite lively, Raheem. I don't know if you've you've seen it, but um, just been a lot of people kind of sharing kind of advice and kind of tips, really. Um, there is, can you see the chat, Raheem? Yes, I can see the chat. Uh, there was a question recently just asking about, I guess, the best way of creating a new pivot table and making sure it's still on the same cache so that it would update with the others. Okay, can you repeat it again? A voice is breaking. This isn't exactly what the question says, but I guess it's, it's asking, um, like if we needed to create a new pivot table now, mm. Um, mm. like the kind of best way of doing it to make sure it follows the same, the same pivot cache, so it gets updated. Okay, yes, yep. uh, yeah. So for that, um, the, the good trick, make a copy of this, uh, pivot table as, as a copy of a new sheet. Uh, don't create a pivot again from the insert tab because it would not create a memory cache same. If you want to bring the same memory cache, either you can select the, ex the first pivot and then copy and paste it somewhere else or make a copy of this particular sheet to make the memory cache same. Super, sorry, I'm just looking around the chats. Uh, feel free to ask a question, guys. If anyone's got a question for Raheem, you can unmute yourself. Yes. Yes, yes. They are welcome to ask question. No questions. Uh, okay, so Mark has saying that how about, uh, okay, one minute. Uh, how about hiding the sheets not needed and uh, very hidden? Yes, yes, that could be done. Uh, that's very good. Uh, if the there are five or six uh, pivot table sheets and you want to do very hidden so you can do it, that's a good technique. Thank you so much for adding this. Presume X lookup can alternate the index and match. Yes, exactly. Uh, but uh, as you can observe that it also depends according to the country context, because here a lot of people don't know X lookup. They are still on V lookup and index and match. Uh, thank you, Abey. Uh, Ahmed Raza, what if we add new data under the existing data? Will the pivot update automatically when we hit refresh button? That's a good question by Ahmed. Ahmed, what you can do is uh, you can make this data in a table format. Okay, so if you can see the data here, uh, make this data in a table format. And what and when next time the data will get append, uh, you just need to click on refresh on the pivots and then uh, it will update your entire dashboard. Okay. So don't uh, go for the normal ranges, make it as a table structured. Oh, yes is a macro available for the auto refresh but not a direct feature in excel so uh, a macro is available on on the most of the excel forums that where you can just uh, do uh, auto refresh for the pivots right i'm question here yeah would this be a good place to add um 
for the pivot table, I'll change the settings so that it auto refresh whenever you um, open the tape the um, sheet. Uh, I think uh, when you when you import a data, so there you have a connection settings and a refresh settings. Uh, there you can apply uh, that auto refresh option when, when you import data in Excel. But you have already data in Excel which is not imported, but but a simple entry of of a data. Then you have to apply a macro. Uh, yes, not not the macro so much in, in terms of the question I'm asking. I'm thinking of this being more dynamic in the sense that you'll be having um, refreshed data, uh, let's say periodic since it's based on um, yeah. time periods. Yeah, uh, I, I can tell you one more technique is that um, when you create a pivot table, you select the data. If you select the blank ranges as well. Um, so if, if the data gets append that it, it could be refreshed, but for, for as far as I have explored till now, uh, I, I will look look at this issue. Uh, I have used macros uh, every time for the auto refresh. Right. Okay. I guess that's that's good because um, once you turn on you or enable yeah. um, refresh for the pivot table, then it applies to all workbooks. So yes. Cool. Any other question which I am missing? Uh, there's a question on changing the colors of your slices. Changing the color of my slices. Yes, we can do uh, changing nice. the Hello. color of slices is just click on the slicer and uh, just go to the slicer tab and uh, click on any color in which you like. Or you can make new slicer style as well. So you can define the colors. Intense. Uh, okay. It's a question on height in the ribbon, Raheem. I don't know if you can hide the ribbon hide automatically hide. without a macro. Any tips on hiding the ribbon automatically without using map? Uh, simply double click on it. Yeah. Mm. Hiding the ribbons. Double click. So it will hide and make it visible. I hope this this give you an answer, relevant answer. We have a, a question on YouTube um, asking if there's any role for the get pivot data function. Uh, so I guess do you, do you like to use that function? Do you ever use it, Raheem? Get pivot. No, no, I have I haven't used that. No. Nah. Control F1 is the shortcut key for the hidden. Thank you I'm oh. for mentioning here. Yes, it's Control F1. Try this page layout menu themes. You will get, yeah. Thank you for all your tips and your questions. If anything is left, uh, and can we get a link of your YouTube channel here in the chat? It can be, it will be provided. Yes. I'll put a lot of this information in that that message, which will probably come out tomorrow. Uh, just yeah. make sure you guys RSVP if, if you haven't yet, because the message will go to those who RSVP. I'll also put it in the YouTube video description. I always do that. So if you're watching the replay, the link to Raheem's file will be in there. Cool. Lots of people saying thank you, Raheem. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Raheem. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks, Ahmed. Ah, oh, thank you. Flying in now. Can't catch them quick enough. <laughs> Don't think we missed any questions. Let us know if we did. Okay, I'm going to close the YouTube
stream, guys, but we're still on Zoom if anybody wants to ask a question at all. <laughs> 